Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Where you are in your life journey, how much experience you have. There is so many awesome people out there that are willing to help you get that first start. We started, you know, shooting sporting plays Mm -hmm. and we started big groups and then, you know, it evolved into other things and we started kind of calling ourselves Girls With Guns. (laughs) But we did everything everything together. By the end of the second day of class, they're shooting one-handed. They are passing their CCW qualification, and they're like, "Woohoo!" At I the got end this. of it, like, yeah. "Yes, I can protect myself, and I know what that looks like because I've learned." Welcome to the inaugural <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, Christy Titus. I'm hoping this thing's going to be called Wild and Uncut. Yes. But we are really sure at this point where this is going to go. But um, ching, 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 ching. ching. Sisters. First, sisters. First episode. We are missing one sister. We are Wait, missing one. Marky. I just want to know how you drink with this thing. <laughs> it is a learned skill. We're yet to master. Wait, I got to figure this out too because I should have a cocktail. With this being so. the inaugural podcast, we this. don't really know how this is going to flow. Mm-mm. Oh, I like yours. Yours is like down here. That's really good, Titus. Down, down and out of the way. Mm. So, okay. Jen O'Hara. Narissa Harmon. Yes. Girls with Guns Clothing, yes. also on Team Ruger. Yes. Yes. We're here at my house at the Titus Ranch I for love this place. year two. We it's have had so much fun at the ranch yeah. and always do. And I have to tell you, thank uh-huh. you so much for letting us come and making it home because yeah. we walk in. I unpacked my entire life into Christie's house. It's literally a carload of stuff. If you can imagine how like women pack and then <laughs> these <laughs> girls come with a baby. <laughs> And you welcome her with open arms, and she, she runs even them peed up. on my porch. Like <laughs> literally know. today, she's running around the backyard nude, and she's like, "Inside, mom, inside." And Jen's like, "No, no, no." And so she just, just sits down and has a wee right there on yeah. the porch. It was yeah. great. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want her in the house because I didn't want her to pee on the floor. And we're in the middle of potty training, so mind you, yeah, M and M's for potty training. Yes, is it a good exchange? Wait, but wait, the M and M's that we got off of the uh, just married counter where the just married yes, ones. Right. Yeah, and Olivia's perfect. ate more than anyone in the house. <laughs> I oh love my it. Gosh. Somebody's got him. I don't like chocolate, but my husband is your, he likes chocolate. So yeah. Good. We I love him. it. Husband, Wait, husband is your, I want to hear about this. No, well, either. I had, I take a team of people to support me because I am mm-hmm. slightly, well, I'm responsible, but also irresponsible for my own life. <laughs> so I have a momager, a dadager, a sisterger and a husbandager, and they all have very different roles as the adjure manager mm. in my life. So I, I have that. this fantastic husband adjure who's behind the scenes right yeah. now. Hi, and hi, making hi, hi. all of this possible. <laughs> He's awesome. Um, and uh, very thankful for that. Yeah. It takes a very strong man to love a woman like us. Oh, because, you know, <laughs> we are some lucky ladies to have such fantastic You guys, husbands. I have to, we have to tell the audience what time it is right now. Yeah, it's oh, it's 10, not late for normal people. It's, it's ten thirty at night. It's late for me because bedtime. It's bedtime because right I eight thirty. I usually turn into like what is that a pumpkin? pumpkin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and we've been filming all day because yeah. we came out to do some tips and tactics and mm-hmm. the well armed woman and Ruger, Ruger, mm-hmm. girls with guns, mm-hmm. Allen, all of the different companies mm-hmm. that we love and support. Yes. And it's actually been really fun. Honestly, I'm pretty sure you were born to do this because I'm just following your lead because I. Yeah love working with you because it's really incredible to see how much you put into these products and how much yeah. you love what you do. Mm-hmm. I do. I think we're all so fortunate. Yeah. Um, let's look back. Yes. Let's go back. SHOT Show. 20. Oh gosh. What it year was, was that? It? 2012? I don't know, but they made me wear a dress. I think it was 2012. We all wore dresses. Right. We dressed up. We all wore dresses. To I don't even wear dresses, you guys. And mingle. Yeah. yeah. And we ladies. all met each other, had never met each other. We mm-hmm. met at this little mixer. Mm-hmm. I think it was our first shot show. Yeah. We were there with Morgan. Yeah. And Titus walked in and we were like, oh, West Coast sisters. Yeah. You know? yeah. 
it was great. We were friends like from that moment forward. That moment, um, absolutely. You girls were a little more rambunctious than me, and I was like, "All right, I'm." I don't know old lady what you're daddy. talking about. <laughs> like, I've old never lady's been dad is over here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. we, it, what's great and what's so fantastic about it is yeah. we have grown in our businesses, mm-hmm. and our passion and purpose absolutely. for what we do. Individually, but also collectively. Mm -hmm. We aren't even the same people that were there Mm -mm. 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. And what I love is the fact that through this, we've remained true to ourselves and Mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. And becoming friends, there are so many women, and I'm just going to say it, in different industries, it doesn't matter where you're at, Mm -hmm. that don't want to see other women succeed. Mm -hmm. And all we've all done is empowered each other as well as some of our other very Mm -hmm. good friends. That's not present, Miss Morgan Mills. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yeah, she's kind of she's she's part of our quad here. But I love that we've all done that and continued mm. to be true to who we really are. Yeah, it's we've evolved so much since that. I mean, we went from like dreamy doe eyed girls to women that yeah. are you know we've got a lot going on. We're yeah. running businesses and mm-hmm. we're successful and you know we have teams and mm-hmm. you know what I love about what we do instead of competing we empower and encourage mm-hmm. and That's I cool. know that you have strengths that I don't mm-hmm. have. Narissa has strengths that I don't have mm-hmm. and when we combine together yeah. we become this superpower yeah. yes. which is like a sisterhood that mm-hmm. every woman out there can totally appreciate yeah, and relate 100%. to. I think we were just talking today and Jen had mentioned, she's like, it, the energy that the three of us get together, but you have really helped us step up our game when it comes to like filming and, you know, like, okay. and, well, and you, <laughs> have, you guys are selling a business. Business. We're always, short, yeah. yeah, we, we have, run a business we all the time, so we do, don't focus on filming yeah, as much. So it's kind of nice that we get to come up to your ranch, which yeah. thank you so much. I mean, it's, it is home up here. We oh. feel home and, um, yeah. but yeah, you encourage us and strengthen us in different ways and so we just totally thank you for that because that's iron sharpens iron yep Aww, yep I love for you sure girls yeah. so, and I feel the same way um I have shirts from the first year <laughs> I met you ladies that's really old though. like yeah. I save I'm such a you guys I was just I can't even believe it we're like the same person <laughs> I know, I know. I like, weird you need to only I'm of... blonde she's brunette yeah, yeah. I know Seriously. Scary. The things that we do. She's like, I have shirts from 10 years ago. I'm like, me too. If you guys, I I don't wear a shirt for like six months, it's gone. I put she it on Poshmark. She tries to come to my closet Well, oh no, I take out. it back. Okay, wait. Wait, you sell her clothes? She's wait, a, look no. at this shirt. I'm like, wait, is he <laughs> holding your hole shirt? In what there? is this going is on? This is my longest standing shirt. I have traveled all over I'm the worried. world. But it's because Sleeveless. it has sentimental this value. It's sentimental. Like, yeah, I've killed, yeah. Yeah, killed a lot of animals and slept in weird places <laughs> like me the congo yeah i'm like yeah. this this is like Mah! isn't that the incredible part of what we do though is that we are we've traveled all over the world like mm-hmm. blessed mm-hmm. for this opportunity met people mm-hmm. i mean some of us make them our husband <laughs> that wouldn't be me i mean i'm just saying <laughs> he's giving like, us you the find eyes them where you find them you right? know. <laughs> but like the friends that i have mm-hmm. i have friends back home I don't have a ton, but the people around the world have really helped mold and shape us to who we are as, you know, just like you have. And it's incredible that we now have the technology in today's world that we can keep in touch and we can be a part of their lives, no matter if we're in another country or not. I love that. I think visiting a lot of cultures um, gives us a new perspective and a newfound appreciation for the blessings that we are really given mm. here in America mm. as a sovereign and free country. Um, because there's not a lot of countries yeah. that have the, the privileges that we're really born with yeah. here in the United States. And we're very fortunate for that. Yeah. And I, I think with that, and I think Narissa, you were kind Talk, of touching yeah. about this today, mm-hmm. how some mm-hmm. of your travels have really changed your mm-hmm. heart as a woman and your mm-hmm. soul and mm-hmm. really transformed the yeah, direction no, your life is going for sure. I mean, even like you know, we always talk about like we had simple upbringings as kids, and mm-hmm. you know, I always say, oh, I was pretty poor. And then you go over to Africa, and you know, you see the way You're those kids. And I'm not poor. We weren't. I poor. had running water. You know, I watched a kid dig um, a water stream out of a like an empty creek. 
and in he Zimbabwe. was in Zimbabwe yeah. and he was asking for our water bottles and I'll never like I remember just sobbing I'll never forget that I'm like it was just a water bottle that's all I could give him and we gave him cokes I think they did yeah. they, they, they were loved asked, the cokes. they loved cokes and, and empty water bottles yeah. because they didn't yeah. have anything that they could get water from and they would cut the water bottles and then and dig scoop. through yeah and I remember that moment yeah. too because what I remember about it is we stopped and we were filming over in Zimbabwe um, after hunting and on that trip I had harvested my hippo mm -hmm. and we stopped we gave thanks mm -hmm. and the entire village came out mm -hmm. and they took this animal apart pregnant women carrying meat on their head yeah. back to feed their families mm -hmm. and this experience that we had was, it was incredible. And mm -hmm. it's not something that you can explain even on camera or social media. No. Actually, mm -hmm. social media wasn't very big back then. No, it's been a while. About it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It was, yeah. And so it's like the people mm -hmm. that affect you, even the people that you mm -hmm. only meet for a minute. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's really shifted our hearts. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was saying earlier today, we were filming and I was saying that I pretty much cried through the first six seasons of filming our TV show yes, just because did. I was seeing things that I would never ever have experienced or seen in my entire life. And, um, like, like I said, like the kids and the poverty and all that stuff is just like, I went from this small town girl who was pretty sheltered, I would say, and small minded <laughs> to this, you know, mm -hmm. seeing so much and, um, yeah, it's, who I am today for sure. I've, I have a whole new perspective and vision and life for what's out there, culture and food and, mm -hmm. you know, just humans that I've met and lifelong friends. And, um, that's really because of our hunting community, exactly. you know, the hunting community and experiences that we've had. So, well, and now both of you are doing a lot of servant oriented yeah. mission work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm for, you know, your kids' camps and mm -hmm. your kids' camps, yeah. both of you. Yeah. I mean, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the servant heart that you yeah. both have found in mm -hmm. this journey. Mm -hmm. Narissa, wouldn't you say that um, mm -hmm. in America we live such a busy lifestyle? I can tell mm -hmm. you that when I'm home, I never stop, and mm -hmm. I know you don't either. Mm -hmm. When you go out of the country and your phone and your iPad and your computer don't work, there's silence. Mm -hmm. And in that silence, um, there's been a lot of spaces where Nerissa and I, through other people, and sometimes just each mm -hmm. other or life experiences, have, for me, come back to God or, mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. found God. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, oh, something that people are like, oh, yeah, okay. But no, it, it's really real. And it's mm -hmm. part of hunting, too. Mm -hmm. And I know you've, we both experienced that in different ways throughout yeah. this journey. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we designed, we recently just designed a shirt that says faith, family, and freedom. And, you know, it kind of encompasses of who we are and, you know, our faith and our family and, um, you know, just a, a here in America having our freedom. And, um, but traveling and having a servant heart is, is something that we both have. And um, now, you know, where I am today, and I can say that hunting has uh, helped me find God. I didn't, you know, I wasn't a believer before and because of the hunting community and, and, and hanging out with a ton of South Africans, <laughs> <Yes> <laughs> a did. lot of them um, kind of go back to the old, US, you know, the traditions of, of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And um, every time I went to South Africa, just being around such good, wholesome people and solid people and people that prayed at dinner and, you know, all those moments. And I just... And they shared their faith. Yeah, and they shared their faith with us. And unapologetically. So, unapologetically. Yes, it wasn't yeah. weird or awkward. It was just mm -hmm. real. It was mm -hmm. awesome. And I, I, I prayed for that, to have that back here in the U.S. And so, but, um, you know, now where I am today because of hunting, we started hunting in a little community called Limpopo. And um, we started our our first hunt there and then circle back four years later I was able to serve on a mission trip in the same community and so I was able to you know not only pour into these kids but also be able to you know share Jesus with them so um, that to me is pretty cool to see how God works you know and so Absolutely. yeah and that is I wouldn't have had yeah. any of that Mm -hmm. If I never hunted or if I never, you know, had our, our clothing brand. And so it's kind of cool to see where we come from to here. So, And just sometimes it's a small conversation that really changes the course of your life. So yeah. 
I don't want to take credit for where you're at in your life. Don't yeah. get that wrong. Yeah. But we had a conversation one day where I was like, look, you ladies need to get your NRA basic pistol instructor. Yeah. You need to get some training and become, you know, an instructor mm-hmm. where you can speak um, with a lot of knowledge yeah. and really just be a good brand ambassador and representative for the Second Amendment and safe shooting sports which is so important it's our mission to be a safe responsible gun owner and jen's like (laughs) yeah (laughs) and you i'm doing that and you like own it like you took this thing this conversation that we had and you have gone so big with it Mm -hmm. and i remember you telling me like do this for yourself do this for knowledge even if you don't end up teaching Mm -hmm. with it you have the experience and Mm -hmm. have learned but it wasn't enough for me because mm-hmm. what I found through this is over the past 10 years, I have been teaching in the youth sports for mm-hmm. a, a local nonprofit kids outdoor sports camp, kids every summer, um, shotgun, rifle. And then we got into the self-defense for pistol and mm-hmm. became a passion. Mm-hmm. I realized that I love to teach. I love to mostly I'm not gonna lie I love to teach women but I'll tell you what Mm -hmm. you get the big guy in your class who's six three and I'm five foot tall and you show him how to rack a slide yes that's happened before and you're like (laughs) yes and they're excited (laughs) they respect you because you do know what you're talking about now granted it's taken me years to get to where I'm at and I've had some amazing mentors I can name a few Illing New Mm -hmm. uh, Ted Lighty Mm -hmm. who I work with currently and he's my um, I partnered with him for Northern Firearms Instruction in NorCal and I teach once a month now and our local community did not have anyone that was really teaching there and teaching that basic knowledge Mm -hmm. and going through with Mm -hmm. CCW and renewals and when COVID hit and we quit traveling. And mm-hmm. of course, I have <laughs> my daughter, but we're busy people. And I'm like, what am I, what am I supposed to do with these extra mm-hmm. hours? And mm-hmm. what am I going to do to fulfill that space where we weren't able to travel and hunt? And Ted and I talked and he's like, everyone is buying. Well, obviously we have 8 million new gun owners in yeah. the last year and a mm-hmm. half. And so I found this space and um, being a woman, it created this healthy open space for women to be able to walk in comfortably and I'll tell you what I saw more than not was a woman walking in and taking her husband by the arm and saying you're you coming with me too yeah and they came That's awesome and it just took maybe the man sometimes had more experience than her sometimes they didn't mm-hmm. sometimes they were on equal ground and um, just teaching him how to safely handle a fire firearm and the fundamentals of it I loved it. And I realized that at one point in my life, I wanted to be an ag teacher. And I was like, this is why I wanted to teach. It's very rewarding to see your students And grow. you're very good at it. Oh, well, thank you. You're a mm-hmm. fantastic teacher. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it. I love it. Kids and women are my passion. But like I say, I mm-hmm. teach a lot of men also. Mm-hmm. And um, my goal is to continue to grow because my grandma told me something before she passed. And she was 83 years old. And she said, you never stop learning. Not a day Amen in your life. Amen to that. Yeah. So I have so much, so much more. I need to learn yeah. but I love it and on this journey I learned when I'm with you I learned when I'm with you I yeah. learned when I'm with other people in the mm-hmm. industry and going to front site in mm-hmm. November we were actually talking mm-hmm. about doing that together mm-hmm. just different places and I really I think it's empowering for us as women mm-hmm. to grow and to handle our firearms to be mm-hmm. able to protect ourselves. because our little community with 13,000 people it's not much bigger than where you live mm-hmm. has really I'm going to say it's gone downhill because, um, yes, we're in California. Please don't judge us, people. <laughs> we are in Northern California, mm-hmm. and but we are in a very um, conservative community with a lot of um, farmers and agriculture, but they are shipping up people that are coming out of prisons, and it's not mm-hmm. s- safe in our community anymore. Mm-hmm. So you do have to carry, and yeah. people are coming to us with that. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of women that want to be their own first responder and they are considering making that decision. Do I want to conceal and carry? Can I in my state? Am I trained properly for it? And even if you just want to attend a class on shooting sports with a certified instructor, doesn't mean you have to make that decision to conceal and carry. 
sometimes it's just getting over that hurdle, picking up a firearm, having that aha moment where you realize it's not this big, scary thing. It's like a car. Once you learn to drive it, Mm -hmm. you feel like for the most part, you're in control of that vehicle. Um, apart from, you know, what other people do around you. But that's the great thing about a firearm is you are really in control of the vehicle. It's a tool. It's a tool. And that's what so many people across America don't understand. I have had multiple women walk into my class for the first time. They take a basic pistol instruction and we walk through the fundamentals and walk up to handle their firearm for the first time. Typically I'll put them in like a training pistol, Mm -hmm. um, uh, The Ruger SR-22 is my go-to for that training pistol, and we'll start with that. And I've had multiple women just have tears. Mm -hmm. Their tears will flood because Mm -hmm. there was so much anxiety pent up because they had never shot a gun before, Mm -hmm. or they had shot a gun and had a bad experience with, no offense men, but with a man who was like, here's my forty five, just go and shoot it, and you just do it your own way. Mm -hmm. And they don't teach them those fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the second day of class, because I usually do like a full weekend of teaching, they're shooting one-handed. They are passing their CCW qualification, and they're like, woohoo, at the end of it. Like, yes, I can protect myself, and I know what that looks like because I've learned. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of women that are afraid to make that first step to shooting mm-hmm. a firearm with live ammunition. Mm-hmm. And I know there's a great group called Shoot Like a Girl that yeah. I've served as an instructor mm-hmm. for. And they have a simulation bus that travels around to a lot of Cabela's and Bass Pro shops around the yes. country. Yeah. And they have inside a simulation system that gives 80% of true recoil. They have a speaker system in there that has some audio. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know totally real but you can have a you're shooting the same frame same firearm you would with live ammunition Mm -hmm. but there's no projectile and it's a great place to go Mm -hmm. and pick up a firearm if you're really terrified take those first shots feel the firearm learn how to rack Mm -hmm. the slide have that sensation of what recoil is going to be like mm-hmm. without ever firing a true shot. And yeah. that is a great program. So if you guys are out there and you're looking for yeah. that, get on the Shoot Like a Girl website because mm-hmm. they have an incredible program. Yeah. Well, and, and that's one of the things you were just saying, rack, rack the slide. And it is literally something that terrifies so many women. And I don't think that people, especially as you go through it, that people who are gun people like us Mm -hmm. or a man who has a lot of strength they don't understand there's a technique Mm -hmm. if you're not strong enough there are women who are 60 and 70 years old walking into my class saying my husband's passed away I need to protect myself Mm -hmm. can you show me how to use this gun and sometimes I'll move them into a revolver but teach them teach them so that Mm -hmm. they know and I think it's so important Mm -hmm. and firearms manufacturers are really answering the call to women that do yes. have or men that have reduced rip, reduced grip strength for example ruger has their new light rack slide yeah. yes. and it's really a fantastic option for people that don't have a lot of strength you know perhaps you have arthritis mm-hmm. um, or some other reason where you're just not that strong and firearms manufacturers are really providing a fantastic answer for those people to where they can still enjoy shooting sports if they want, right. still mm-hmm. have personal protection, be their own first line of defense if they choose to make that choice as well. And that is empowering so many yeah. new shooters, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think that the, the firearms companies have gone above and beyond with Mm -hmm. testing with bringing on women Mm -hmm. to become ambassadors such Mm -hmm. as we are with Ruger and test their firearms Mm -hmm. and check them out and Mm -hmm. give them that feedback and they actually really listen and Mm -hmm. I love that because we're actually out there I'm going to say it on the front lines (laughs) we're actually out there shooting and talking to people training people you know whatever the different things may be Mm -hmm. for each of us but I think it's really great that we're in this space and Mm -hmm. this time in the world because 10 years ago when we started I guess Mm -hmm. it's been a little bit more than 10 but it wasn't like that. Wow. It was like 12 years. Yeah. Has it been that long? It's been 12 years. I'm still 20. What are you talking about? Yeah, I know. I was like, who's oh how my old? Gosh. What? Gosh, that's but crazy. I love, and what I love too is like the sisterhood within the community mm-hmm. yeah. because I only talked about like us and Morgan, but how many incredible women are out there mm-hmm. that do support and love so us? So many incredible yeah. women, yeah. right? Yeah. 
but what's crazy is the transformation that you've kind of made too. Your roots were in hunting. Mm -hmm. And totally. you girls have changed mm -hmm. um, so much. Your husband introduced you yeah. to hunting and has been a huge, huge. influence in yeah. your life. I mean, we, <laughs> we didn't grow up hunting. So, I mean, yeah. but my dad was a fisherman. So yeah. we did fish as kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a cheap entertainment. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and so we would camp and fish and um, so we were always kind of like in the outdoors but it wasn't until you know I started dating my now husband that um, if I really wanted to spend any quality time with him I would have to chase him out to the woods and I actually started enjoying Literally, it like chase him to the woods, him <laughs> <laughs> <into> the woods. <laughs> and he <laughs> is quite the hunter <laughs> yeah yeah so um but like everything that I've learned is, is because of him. And mm -hmm. I mean, he spent hours with Jen and I before we'd go on these huge hunts and getting us ready and helping us dial in our guns. And, um, so he, he taught us so much of what we know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. conservation side, uh, you know, just being able to hunt mature bucks. I didn't know any of that. You know, I shot my first pig with my husband at 16. I didn't even have hunting gear. I had some Levi jeans with some Vans. I was going to say, you we were have wearing that black picture. Converse. I was probably. wearing like, <laughs> like Vans because those were the things. Remember like Chucka boots? I don't oh know if anybody knows gosh. that. But yeah, we didn't, we didn't have like, there wasn't really women's hunting gear. And I would say, you know, Brian and I, gosh, we've been together for 80,000 years, but... <laughs> Is it, isn't it 20 next yeah, month? Yeah, it'll be 20 no, in, in August. In August. Yeah. So when we started hunting, I mean, there wasn't really camo out there. So, um, yeah, it's kind of fun to see just where we've come, but also where the industries come because mm -hmm. there wasn't so many companies that tailored for women back then. So And Narissa literally, I have to say this, is that she had a dream and a vision, and she's such a creative mm -hmm. personality um, you've rubbed off on me a little bit. I'm not the fashionista that you are, hence yeah. my life living in With leggings. my holy shirt that well, I'm wearing. Hey, <laughs> hey, times have changed. I'm COVID wearing, and home offices. I'm wearing cut-off sleeves, okay? Like, <laughs> I'm cut-off shorts. Well, we don't wait. wait. <laughs> There's a party up top, and you don't want to see what's down bottom. <laughs> I'm wearing girl as you go pants. Thank you very much. But one AKA of, leggings. Yeah. One of the things that I've noticed is – the the fact that where we came mm. from now you're right it's been 12 years I can't yeah. believe we just had our 12 yeah. year anniversary is that we started together in this real estate business I was a real estate agent she was working for mm -hmm. the broker and running his business and nurse is like I I have this name but she wouldn't tell me because if you know her which you do I'm very secretive very secretive very secretive and she's like but I can't tell you. You need to sign like a non-disclosure. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> so I wasn't if even that any. was Jen, she'd have been like, Bleh. yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. 100%. And I'm like, okay. So she does finally tell me and we make this plan. And I'm very much a business person. Now, I didn't yeah. know that. Thank you, Lord, for yeah, it being one of my gift, gifts. For sure. But it was like all of a sudden, like he placed us in our lives together because we were Mutt and Jeff. <laughs> different as night and day. I am a country bumpkin from a town of 400 people, grew up on a farm, ranch, rodeoing, and Nur grew up in town and fishing, yeah. but mm -hmm. totally No, I was like different. a thug redneck. Were. I wasn't going to say that. I was yeah. like Literally, that for you. I was, redneck. you yeah. are such a, so yeah. thuggish. I mean, we're, because you Puerto can't Rican. live in Red Puerto not Rican, redneck. what do you Thugs expect? Harmony. <laughs> That's her. But this was the plan. <laughs> this was his plan was for us because we've evolved and this company started yeah. when there was nothing else out there. Yeah. You know, there wasn't any other companies really doing hunting. We started with t-shirts and hats in the garage, rhinestoning. Yeah. And I'm like hat pressing till my arm hurt doing orders. Those were the good old days. Those were the good old days. And then we evolved to yeah. hunting and concealed casual and range wear. And mm -hmm. I mean, we're not even the same same company at all that we were 12 years ago. We started, ago. it's funny, like I think I was looking back on something the other day, but when we started like really marketing our company was the MySpace days. Mm, no MySpace, did you guys hear that? MySpace. Yeah. Some people are like, what is that? I'm not going to lie. I still have a MySpace and my mom <laughs> figured it, out my wait, login. Wait, does MySpace yep. exist They still, still yep. exist. So we went and took some photos off of it still. for my dad's <laughs> birthday, 60th birthday party. And my mom's like, I think I can guess your login. And I'm like, all right. It was old, old email. And she had figured out my password and like took pictures off. 
Oh, and how God. cool is that? Yeah. We used to like old back in the day, we would post everything, everything about like what we were doing. Oh, we got a new retailer. Oh, we got this new sale. Oh, we people loved it. Yeah. And they, that's really how we started. I think we were the pretty much the original gangsters when it comes to <laughs> marketing and branding because we shared everything and people loved it. And you were on the front lines yeah. of social media. Yeah. We were ahead. We of didn't curve. even know. I always tell Norris that if we had the social media that we have today when we were traveling, which we haven't even gotten into yeah. when we started Girls With Guns TV, had we had that, people would be like, holy cow. Nobody, most people don't even know the stuff yeah. that we've done, like yeah. Africa 11 times yeah. and all the different countries we've been to that we were so blessed by our producer to take us to. Um, it was so incredible and we have some crazy life experiences we've never even shared with people yeah. <laughs> except for in private and yeah. over a cocktail with some friends <laughs> ching, ching. Ching, ching. i think it's cocktail time again I'm hold like, on wait i need a, a refill no husbandager <laughs> <laughs> in walks the husbandager okay here it comes <laughs> oh no don't crawl don't, don't crawl. crawl we love you gogi mm. oh <laughs> hey, we're all in great outfits we're, for a podcast. We're all fabulous as we are. You know, I love the realness of our relationship and that we were talking there about this the other night. On, oh, love you, heart. Husbandager, you. a.k.a. Husband Garçon. Oh, what's Garçon? What is it? <laughs> oh, whoa. We Did you say Garçon? Garçon. Oh. <laughs> Garçon. Garçon. You know, Aren't those like in the castles? It's like a fancy waiter or yeah. something oh, like oh, that. Okay. Yeah, okay. like. I love that. We're learning. Garçon. Oh, no. French word for boy. Okay. <laughs> Grasson. It's fine. It. They say grasson. Grasson. Oh, okay, well, you, lose some, you learned something new. We learned did. This yeah. is, I did not know the direct translation. I just understood basically what it meant, and it was, you know, a foreign guy serving you a drink. Oh. Basically. You're like, I'm woo-hoo. good. Which <laughs> is my husband, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> we love it. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But how amazing. We just got railroaded. So, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. We're we're like, back in. One, sorry. This Jen needed a, a this drink. This is the wild and, and then... uncut portion of this. Oh, yeah. right? No, I love wild and uncut. We have to be just who we are. Yeah. It's always like you kind of get on a podcast, which we've done and I'm sure you too, tons of podcasts over the years. And you're like, okay, maybe on my best behavior right now, I'm sitting in cut off shorts and one of my closest girlfriend's house having a glass of wine <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night. Probably it my second is, glass is my bad time. It's okay. We're not going to melt and turn into a pumpkin. No, I'm, Thanks I'm pulling Lord. it. There okay. might. I might. But I, before we go deep dive <laughs> oh, into GWG and GWG TV, Jen, I want to talk with you mm. because you started hunting in your late 20s, and there's a lot of women that I hope are watching this podcast that maybe haven't either, you know, taken up shooting sports right. or haven't tried hunting. And you have been like this incredible woman that has done it all and not let age dictate your dream or mm-hmm. opportunities that you allow yourself to have, which is Absolutely. so inspirational well you know the thing is is that number one when we're in our 20s we feel invincible it doesn't matter if you're 27 Mm -hmm. but I grew up on a ranch a small ranch in NorCal it was about 1500 acres my dad was a farmer rancher we had cattle and alfalfa and my brother and my dad were the hunters now as Narissa said we we like to say now we used to like jokingly say we're we were poor We weren't poor because we've seen that in other countries. We had a simple lifestyle and the way that we were brought up. By American standards. So, yes, but I am so grateful for that. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful for the values that my dad instilled in me and taught me my work ethic. I was buying my own clothes when I was nine years old with my pig money from 4-H. Oh, my gosh. That's like my... But that's like, that's my people right, right? there. Yeah. Oh, 4-H and FFA. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Public speaking skills 101. You put your kids in that. And yeah. Olivia will be there when she's five because that's the youngest age that you mm-hmm. can put your kids in. But those, those types of things were where we started. Mm-hmm. So we always had a shotgun behind the door. And I'm positive that it was loaded. I'd have to ask my dad to confirm. But we didn't touch it. We don't encourage you to do this. No, Please no, no, no. Please store yeah. your firearms yeah. and ammunition <laughs> Just in close a separate that. location and lock them. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Absolutely. So this was, we're talking um, 30 years ago. So it wasn't the world that we live in today where 
I have a safe in every room in my house because if I do need to store my firearm properly, mm-hmm. I do. But that's the world we lived in 30 years ago. So at 10 years old, I'm out and I learned to shoot my shotgun. I learned to shoot my rifle. My dad taught us about self-sustainment. And I went with him and my brother. I went with them hunting. And we would have antelope or we'd have mule deer. And that's what we ate. I remember the drying racks in the kitchen. Um, helping them skin in the shop Mm -hmm. and we would have jerky and venison was our favorite we'd always fry it it was like a thing um and i and i still cook it to this way only when i'm yeah yeah it's so good it's It's so so good good. so good you would and those are the things and those are the memories that i love about that but i didn't hunt and i don't know that i was and still am to this day a huge animal lover and i don't know if that's um something that maybe held me back from not being sure, but it wasn't a thing for the girls mm-hmm. 30 years ago. Yeah, it wasn't as popular. It wasn't. Yeah. And so I was always horseback and I was always out doing these other things. And, um, I hunted with my ex-husband on the back of his quad. We, um, actually had his family had a ranch and we would actually do predator control. So we would go out and we would hunt the coyotes and, um, because they were slaughtering the lambs while, um, on his family's farm. And so we continued to do things like that. And I was a part of it, but never did it myself. And then I was single and, um, Narissa and Brian and I basically lived all the time together (laughs) because I was doing girls with guns and I was over at their house all the time. And, um, for my 30th birthday, they told me, was it 30th? No, I'd already started doing like a lot of, um, bird hunting, turkey, small game. And my 30th birthday, they said, we're going to take you out and we're going to find you a buck. And they took me out to some private property and we spent a ton of time learning about conservation. Mm -hmm. Brian, I'm like first buck and I'm like buck fever. (laughs) I'm like, let's shoot it. Let's go. (laughs) And Brian's no Jen. And this is why we don't. And so Mm -hmm. he taught me. And so the very first um, buck I shot was a black tail. He was seven to eight years old. Mm -hmm. It was a nice mature buck. And I will never forget the stock because Brian, who is this seasoned hunter had taught me everything, had taken me in to dial my gun in. And we are crawling on hands and knees. Mm -hmm. And we get up to the top of this hillside because he had spotted him probably like 500 yards out. I don't even know how, because at the time I didn't know anything about it. And I remember coming up on my shooting sticks and I'm getting ready to shoot and Brian's in my ear talking to me and he's doing this because he is as excited as I am because the the passion and the love that he has mm-hmm. for hunting yeah. and I'll never forget that and he's grown with Narissa and I through mm-hmm. the years um I know he's been a guide in the past but just to help us always give us advice and be there yeah. and a huge part of me not only Narissa and mm-hmm. how we started not only hunting, but how we became better at it. Mm. And so many PHs and guides through the years. I mean, Mm. the people that we learned from traveling throughout the world have been incredible. And I'm grateful to each and every one of them and friends still with most of them. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So does it matter where you are in your life journey, how much experience you have? There is so many awesome people out there that are willing to help you get yeah. that first start yeah. and you just got to find them well and it's so the people say well I, I've never hunted where do I start yeah. okay well there's so many nonprofit conservation groups like Safari Club International yeah. great organization great organization mm-hmm. um, they've got chapters all across the country they've got a ton of educational resources mm-hmm. that are local their funding stays local um, what's really awesome about them is like if you have a project you want to put together and you need a grant you can go to your local SEI chapter and say look I need help and they have grant money for that and they can award that locally and that's a lot of how I actually got started in my journey is working with Safari Club in yeah. my early 20s and I did all these outreach yeah. projects so I always encourage people, if you're new to mm-hmm. hunting and you're new mm-hmm. to shooting sports, if you want to learn how to how to hunt, join a conservation group. Right. Yeah, I agree. Because if you're going to take, we have to give back. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And we need to leave this world in a better place than Absolutely. we've come into it. And, Absolutely. you know, that is so important, which mm-hmm. is really what you're doing with your daughter. Mm-hmm. And I love your story about your daughter. So share mm-hmm. with everybody how you're raising mm-hmm. your daughter different than you. Well, even though I, I grew up on a big ranch, um, Mm. and I remember after we had Olivia and she's two now, well, two years and three months, John, my husband said to me, 
how do we let her grow up the way you did? And I said, well, we can't duplicate that because we can't take away devices Mm -hmm. or put her on a 1500 acre ranch. But we can do is bring that to her. So we have 18 acres in NorCal and we have currently 22 hens, (laughs) one rooster named Rue, and we have 12 baby chicks. Um, Her favorite is Ellie and she's a Brahma chick. And we go in twice a day, pick her up, hold her. Olivia comes with me since she was three months old on my pack And she'd be in the front pack, and that's how she's learned to count to 20. Yes, I'm bragging about my daughter. (laughs) And we would walk in, and we'd go, one egg, two egg. So over the the time, she has learned about, I would say, sustainability and being self-reliant by having – not buying something from a grocery store, but knowing that chickens come from an egg and – did I just say eggs that? come from eggs a chicken? Come from well, a chicken. Which <laughs> comes first, the chicken or that the egg? That is a great question. Oh we don't God. really know. If somebody can we please don't know. It's late. write in the comments below <laughs> which came first, we'd really like to have this answered on this. And podcast. I'm so thankful Thank that you, you very much. <laughs> ching ching. Eggs ching. come from a chicken. Oh. <laughs> which is first? But Nobody knows. <laughs> but the kid knows how to count the eggs. But she that's does. Great. Yeah. And that's the thing. And growing up knowing that, and then mm. we bring into it garden and Mm. knowing that you can go out and pick the strawberries every day or pulling up just before I came here because I knew we were going to be gone for a little while we dug up our potatoes and Mm -hmm. she's in the dirt going mama potato big Mm -hmm. you know and Mm -hmm. those are the things that I love but even you know, before all of this, she was six months old and Narissa and I drew a tag um, up back home with my dad and my dad took us out and I harvested my first buck after pregnancy and she was right there by mm-hmm. my side. We have little earmuffs for her and baby bands oh, she and was they're calling awesome. the deer, remember? Oh, we were just gosh. watching a video the other day and we were yes. like, she was like, meet, meet. And we're like, she's calling the deer. She's oh, she went, the deer. she was on the pack and I'm out here and now, granted, she has on, like, her fuzzy hat with, like, little ears, and it's pink. But everything else was camo, mm-hmm. me and Nur. But it was cold, and we That's put cute. them on. And we were walking through, and we were just checking up. We were mm-hmm. checking some trail cams and doing some different things. Mm-hmm. But what an incredible experience to be with not only your mom but your aunt. Mm-hmm. And just learning and being in the outdoors. That was six months old. Yeah, um, I mean, but I just – I'm going to add in really quick. I didn't grow up like that. My brother didn't grow up like that. Mm-mm. So, side note. Jen's married to my brother. <laughs> we forgot note, to mention that. We forgot, to mention, forgot that. to mention that the best friend uh, became the sister-in-law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. But, it, it, you know, and we were best friends first. Yeah, um, yeah. But and John, that can yeah. be a real sketchy yeah. thing. Yeah, it's yeah. working out so far. It's, it's, for, it's, for a minute, it was. Yeah, we're going to keep we're, John Boy. Yeah, now we're high. 11 years Hot in. Minute. We're good. Hot we're minute. good. But, um, you know, my brother and I didn't grow up that way. So right. to be able to, you know, witness the way that they raised their daughter is pretty fun and to see but my you're brother a part of it such yeah. a huge part oh absolutely mm-hmm. like, she's incredible team. yeah that's why i have a whole family of adjurers yeah right. <laughs> right? Adjurers. <laughs> but I, what i love too is so john came home from his archery hunt last august and he sat down with her and we showed her the buck and mm-hmm. she sat with it and she's like pretty and she wants to t- you know like know more yeah. about it and trying to explain it it doesn't matter how young they are Mm -hmm. you start young and you explain that Mm -hmm. when I hunted my antelope um I was out with my dad and it was a family hunt and we're out in in NorCal and John came and actually spent the entire weekend watching her for me thank you husband Mm -hmm. and that way that I could actually go out and hunt because it's hard it is so hard when you become a mom to actually leave your kid to go and do something no matter how much you love Mm -hmm. it but I know Narissa is my biggest cheerleader and always telling me you are showing her Mm -hmm. you are showing her how to do these things so remember that but she came out on the last night and she was my lucky charm and I harvested my antelope and I've also hunted turkey and uh, with her Mm -hmm. as well as let's see john's buck and oh wyoming Mm narissa and i took her to wyoming on our gwg ladies week and we both harvested beautiful mule deer Mm -hmm. so she's been on my last she's here with us right now which is awesome because i mean she gets to see you know strong independent women that are you know paving the way for her and her generation Mm -hmm. so her favorite thing is Mommy shooty a gun. <laughs> I don't think she says that. Mommy shooty gun and daddy shooty bow. bow. <laughs> yeah. hey, you 
you heard it the other day. Exactly who shoots what. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. the thing is that we teach them now and we are the first yeah. people to influence an imprint on their lives mm-hmm. and we yeah. teach them right. And I think that's the most important thing that I can do. And that's part of my legacy, whether it be with a child that I've never mm. met, but I've been training at Kids Outdoor Sports mm-hmm. Camp or a woman or a man who walk into my CCW class or my own daughter. We need to be the example and we need to be better. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of women out there and men even for that mm-hmm. matter that will say, look, I want to be a mentor. Mm-hmm. What group should I join? And my answer to a lot of these people is become your own group. Yeah. Do it yeah. yourself. Like, you you know, figure out what you want to do. Do you want to teach archery? Do you want to teach firearms? Do you want to teach hunting skills? Do you, I mean, whatever it is, is your passion. Become that leader yeah. in your community because yeah. leaders aren't born, they're made. Absolutely. And you have Absolutely. to be that person Absolutely. for the people around you, for the next generation. And mm-hmm. and um, when you need help, that's when you can go to organizations yeah. like NRA, you know, Friends of NRA Banquets. They give out um, all the monies raised mm-hmm. at those banquets are for educational programs. And they give out a whole grant program as well where – you can say, hey, this is my concept. This is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to impact mm-hmm. my community. Mm-hmm. There's grant money available. Yeah. Right. There's resources available. Yeah. You don't have to feel like you can't do something. Mm-hmm. The, you know, you just have to take that first step yeah. and be that person or join an organization that's already very active yeah. in your community. There's always that option. Yeah. And I think it's really important that people actually take the time to realize Number one, where our food came from. Number two, do I want to own a firearm? Do I want to defend mm-hmm. myself? And yeah. how? Uh, what is their choice on or mm-hmm. stance in this? Mm-hmm. Because we live in a very complicated world, mm-hmm. and it is changing rapidly. And there's so many things that I think that people like us and other people in the mm-hmm. industry can help to influence the people who don't know because they didn't grow up that way. Mm-hmm. Look at what Brian showed Narissa yeah. at a, such a young age to where she's now become an influencer in – Mm-hmm. all over the world yeah. and you were influenced by brian as much as narissa right. was yeah. which is incredible that one yeah. person has literally changed the lives of two people yeah. and i don't even think he knows how much no he's because he's so shy yes <laughs> so quiet i would and never I be so here fortunate to get yeah. To yeah. Yeah. but but that's the thing even though i grew up in the outdoors on a ranch with a hunting and fishing family yeah. it, i didn't have anybody that just took me and grabbed me by mm the arms and Mm -hmm. said, this is how you do it Mm -hmm. until Brian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to go back to what you were saying about like different organizations. I mean, you know, getting involved, it doesn't always have to be like, I'm not an instructor. I don't, you know, I would much rather go and shoot with like you girls and, Mm -hmm. you know, just be in a community of other women because Mm -hmm. you guys have showed, you know, taught me certain things that I'm not strong at. So I love that we get to have little small groups like this. And mm-hmm. that, that's that's as easy as it can be. You guys can just three find people. three people, yep. three girls, yeah. and just hang out and, you know, create your own community. And that's kind of like how them. really Girls With Guns started, is we started, you know, shooting sporting clays, mm-hmm. and we started big groups, and then we, you know, it, it evolved into other things, and we started kind of calling ourselves Girls With Guns. <laughs> but we did everything, everything. together. Yeah. Narissa actually mm-hmm. took me out of my element because I was such a small town person and was like, let's go wakeboarding. Let's go snowboarding. Let's do this. Yeah. And, you know, realistically, women just need to empower women. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is yeah. that you want to do, but just be mm-hmm. there and support each other. Yeah. And I think we've always done that for each other and all mm-hmm. three of us also through yeah. the years. Well, and a lot of the content we're creating – at my ranch this week is for the well-armed woman shooting chapters oh, yeah. we love and them. there's over 500 chapters across the country mm-hmm. with women that are there to support each other in their shooting sports yeah. journey right and that is so profound um, that we have this community that we can lean on and share information yeah. collectively because None of us are reinventing the wheel. Like you said earlier, we're all students. We're all learning every day we learn. None of us knows no, everything. We don't never. have an we answer don't want for to. everything. Yeah, we don't yeah, want to. We, we don't want to be that person. <laughs> if you are that person, you probably really don't know everything. Yeah, <laughs> and it's great, though, that we have this community that where we can learn from each other and through yes. each other. Yeah. So your own personal experiences. Mm-hmm. This week we talked about um, – 
different types of holsters, what mm-hmm. works for each one of us based on our own personal mm-hmm. experiences because our preferences are all so unique. Yes. And um, I'm so excited about the stuff that we're yeah. sh- going to be sharing with everybody yeah. based around that. And um, that's really yeah. it's impactful, I think. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you talked about the Well-Armed Woman, and I think we've been a part of the organization for the past five years now. Mm. yeah five or, five, five or six yeah and literally those women it is a sisterhood mm-hmm. and they support each other and you have women from communities that can that can live in communities that are anti-gun mm-hmm. but they have found that they really feel the need to protect themselves mm-hmm. and um stand by our second amendment mm-hmm. right to the people like us mm-hmm. who are conservative and have grown up with guns and all the things but you get to see all of that difference and they all support each other 100%. And I love that. I love that we have that out there and it's such an amazing community Mm -hmm. that we can fall back on and we can learn from Mm -hmm. as well. And what's really, I think, incredible with that too um, is that personal protection and the right to defend yourself knows no race, Mm -hmm. knows no gender, knows no political affiliation, knows no religion. Mm -hmm. It is the right of every human being mm-hmm. and it's a right that's inalienable and given by God. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, yeah, here in preach. the United States, we are so fortunate Yes, and we have to protect our rights mm-hmm. for all of human race. Yes, we do. And that is what's so great about a lot of these chapters in these groups mm-hmm. is that we understand that it is a God-given right Mm -hmm. regardless of anything. It's a human right. It is. And the other thing that I think that's really important is that we also understand the responsibility that comes Mm. with that right. And training. We talked about that all weekend Mm -hmm. as that you need to train, you need to understand, and you need to know, yes, it is our right, but being Mm -hmm. a responsible firearms owner is number one. Mm -hmm. We have all lived... 30 years ago (laughs) when things weren't done the way that they are today. And you have um, Mm. different organizations such as Project Child Safe Mm -hmm. that really teach us about what is right so that we don't make the same mistakes because people are human and they do make mistakes Mm -hmm. over the years that may give guns a bad name, but they're not. They're a tool. They're a Mm -hmm. self-defense tool that we use. And Mm -hmm. as long as you know how to use them properly and efficiently, then you are always going to be the good guy. You're going to be the one who is out there making a difference in this world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's talk about what you guys are doing with GWG on your concealed line. You have this huge hunting line Mm -hmm. and footprint that is the backbone of GWG, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you're doing a lot of really new and exciting things in the world of shooting sports that I think a lot of people aren't even aware that you're doing. Yeah. So can you guys talk to us a Come little bit about some of that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we recently, let's see, how many years ago was that? Three years ago that we started the Concealed Casual? We were, let's see, we launched um, the year that I had Olivia. So 2019. Okay, so 2019 we created um, kind of like an off-brand of our, of our Girls With Guns clothing line called Concealed Casual. And so we kind of really wanted to create something where it wasn't, GWG where it's like guns everywhere and bling that, it, bling it. <laughs> like all over yeah, my truck yeah so we just <laughs> I like the bling tees me too you like sequined on I'm sorry I'm yeah like good. I, like I know them. oh my well gosh, we're loud too. and proud right yeah the three of us are we're loud and proud second amendment American yeah, girls with guns yeah but when you're carrying but you can't always yeah, you be can't always you have be. to be more discreet <clears throat> yeah so we well kind of, if you're can still carrying absolutely yes yeah yeah, yeah. we don't want no guns ablazing bling bling Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah we created this really amazing um it's kind of like athletic leisure wear and we've started with a couple leggings and sweatshirts and t-shirts and gosh jackets jackets and and vests and And they've evolved every year and it's been really fun to see the evolution like personally I've gotten to see the evolution of your apparel and how every year you ladies really expand on it and make it better and go direct to the consumer and find out what Mm -hmm. they need, what they want. Mm -hmm. Um, Because trends and everything changes every Every, year. Technology changes. Um, Standard operating procedures with safety. 
it's an evolution yeah, yeah. Uh, constantly. And you girls have been fantastic with keeping up with yeah. those trends and consumer demands. Yeah. yeah I want to, I want to, you know, touch on that because we've really went back to our fans mm -hmm. and what they have wanted. Mm -hmm. And so we really try to include them in every little aspect of it, you know, try to get them involved, ask them what they want to see, you know, engage with them mm -hmm. socially. And uh, because of that, we've really, even like the well-armed woman, we have went back to the drawing board and really really fine-tuned um, our sizing because mm -hmm. we wanted something for all sizes. We're not all built the same, as you can yeah. see oh, here. Yeah. We're all different shapes and sizes. And so we've really listened, and it gets better every year. We, we perfect things. Even now, Jen, being an NRA pistol instructor, we've been able to go back to the drawing board with our athletic line mm -hmm. and our concealed casual line and um, even our new concealed carry bags. We've really fine-tuned that. And so... I think we grow. I mean, like you said, we're always learning. Mm -hmm. How can we make it better? And how can we make it better for the customers? And so I love that. And like you said, we've, we've from day one, being a t-shirt company and even, I mean, you guys, we started with bikinis and board shorts and that was, <laughs> that's a whole and other, now, yeah. I like, have no. your bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, actually, yeah. I have them. Yeah. I mean, so. it's evolved so much, yeah. but it's the things that Jen and I have done. You know, Girls With Guns was really based around the two of us and what our lifestyle is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we never thought it was going to be a national slash international. Yeah. Brand. We just were it like, was fun. Let's, let's go shooting and put a logo on it. Let's yeah. go snowboarding or wakeboarding and put a logo on it. And 12 years ago, 12 it's years ago, a you know, and that's, and you started in your garage. Yes. yes. My garage with a single head embroidery machine. And we were working 110 all degrees out and I'm stamping hats and she's embroidering t-shirts. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it was fun. The craziest adventure you ever had. Until and I remember advice from one of our friends who actually invested in our company along the way. And we were on a wakeboard boat with him because um, that was one of our things that we loved to do was go and wakeboard together. And he looked at us and he said, remember, when you stop loving it, you should probably stop doing it. So enjoy the journey. And mm -hmm. we've never stopped I loving love it. Yeah. We still love what we do. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think is the most important is that we are actually those people. Mm -hmm. We live the lifestyle. So when we talk about concealed casual or mm -hmm. girls with guns or hunting being our backbone, mm -hmm. uh, that's who we are. And yeah. yeah, we came into it in different spaces and different times mm -hmm. in our life, but it's a passion. And concealed casual was about us protecting ourselves mm -hmm. and being fashionable while doing it, but also being safe because mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing. I'll tell you what, the very first leggings we made, we were like carrying them mm -hmm. and, you know, we're field testing because we always field test our own mm -hmm. products. And it's like, okay, it needs this. And Nur and I will be texting each other back and forth notes or yeah, handwriting right. or, you know, we share a note on our iPhones. But we continue to evolve and change because you don't always catch it or you find mm -hmm. something new mm -hmm. or a friend comes up and says, well, I learned this yourself. You know, you're one of them. And people give us feedback. Um, mm -hmm. Our range gear as competitive shooters, we've had friends like Julie Gallup come mm -hmm. to us and say, oh, I'd, I'd like to see this. Mm -hmm. So it's just really important that we evolve and we're open to it because we are continuing to learn. Mm -hmm. And you guys are evolving even with safety equipment. So you now have a fashionable eye protection, mm -hmm. which eye protection, I've always struggled with rifle shooting, finding eyewear that I want to wear. That's cute. Um, <laughs> fashionable. <laughs> yeah. Um, your guys is a fire eyewear. I, my joke was when we did the stand up for that last year, I'm like, the fire eyewear sets me on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're cute right like they yep. are this beautiful gold rim glass and right. they're they're beautiful glasses but they're great because I don't have an I don't have any view obstruction mm -hmm. in my rifle scope when I'm looking up at an angle which some of the mm -hmm. thicker eyewear yeah. you can get like these weird lines that'll obstruct your view and um, you guys have just done a great job and you have electronic muffs um, standard muffs mm -hmm. and plugs and all of this is available at tons of retailers mm -hmm. um around the country and you you're not just making camo or women's hunting clothing you're not just making concealed carry clothing and accessories like purses mm -hmm. you're also going completely now into safety right. which is 
awesome. It's like, it's like a full circle of everything that you ladies embody mm. because you're always looking out for comfort, care, concern, safety, mm. responsibility, and your brand really has become that. Mm. Well, I think for us, we found the right partner to be able to do that with. Nurse and I always have done different things throughout in this industry, but Allen and Company mm-hmm. is actually who we partner with for our eyes and ears, mm-hmm. um, our range bags, our concealed carry purses. They're incredible. Yeah. Targets. Mm-hmm. Yes, targets. Everything. They Were they a easy aim targets? years yeah. in business? I mean, what can you say I about actually, that? I don't know if you remember this, but when we first started like screen printing and embroidering, I used to buy blank Allen, um, the little yes. sporting clay mm-hmm. bags. I remember that. I still and have two. Yeah. It's mine and John's and so favorites. so I would get them at wholesale. Mm-hmm from like one of the companies online and I would embroider them on my embroider. I should tell them that. That oh, is yeah, a you totally great. Should. I don't so think I still have, I s- you probably threw them away because you don't like hoarders. We're hoarders. Yeah. I would so I still have all. two of them in <laughs> my ammo do. and camo you room. Pull that out yes. and see if we can share That's that That's a great archive. Isn't that great a great archive? I mean, if you think see, about you it too, that memory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like people like, like how incredible is that 12 years later to right. come full circle and to have them be yeah. such an incredible partner. And I mean, we were so really into a lot of like clay shooting back mm-hmm. in the day. And we were doing some of the competitions locally and it was a lot of fun. We actually um, put on a fundraiser and yeah. Narissa, that's how she wrote me into girls with guns. So <laughs> that's where that came from. Yeah. And so all these years later, and I didn't know it was Alan until right now sitting yeah. on this podcast. I just remember the brand. What yeah. an incredible, incredible company to be involved with because they take it so seriously. So we take our fresh views and women's perspective and their amazing everything and we put it together and that's, they literally make everything Everything. and it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were using targets today. We're using eyes and ears. And I mean, we had ours and you had another Mm -hmm. Allen brand and, and it's just a really multi great. tools for firearms. Right. They've got gun cleaning kits. Yep. They've got steel. They've got anything uh, you can anything. imagine. Archery accessories. Yeah. I'm always seeds. like, so can you make us this? You yes. know, they have everything. It's really incredible. Yeah. And they are a fantastic partner and Wonderful. Um, really fantastic to work with. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's, you know, the people that we work with in the, quote unquote industry really become an extended family mm. you believe in them and you support them as they believe in you and yeah. support you oh, and you yes. really grow together and that's the beauty of it is yeah. it's such fantastic synergy and you can't fake that yeah no, no. you can't so where do people if they want to learn more about the two of you if they want to follow along on your adventures where can people go to find both of you. Yeah. How do, how do you want people to reach out to you? I would say uh, gwgclothing.com or all of the social media channels. It's mm-hmm. either Girls With Guns or Girls With Guns Clothing on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. We still Twittering. Do we have a tweet? Yep. <laughs> I tweet. Whatever it is. I <laughs> don't know. Fans. I'm behind uh, the time. Twitter painted. Twitter, uh, yeah. GWG Jen on Instagram, GWG Nur, yeah. and um, Jen O'Hara or Narissa Harmon on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. And what they haven't mentioned in this whole podcast, which is absolutely crazy, is they have a TV show. Oh yeah, called <laughs> Girls with Guns TV that is available to watch on Carbon TV. We yeah. are in. <laughs> we just launched year seven, season yeah. yes. seven, and um, it's been fun. But yeah. it's it's a yeah. much smaller scale of what we do, but it's been a really great platform mm-hmm. yeah. to really field test our clothing and be out yeah. there in the outdoor world. Well, ladies, I thank you both so much yeah. for this impromptu late night. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, what time is it? Let's <laughs> late see. night it's bedtime. It's 1130. Um, it's a full 11. Yeah. It's almost midnight, and we have well, a busy morning. Cheers to your first to podcast. This. Yes, we did we it. We did it. Woo-hoo. Of course, together, it wouldn't be right yeah. any other way. So yeah. thank you, ladies. Thank Can't you. Wait. And thank you all for joining us. Mm. I should say that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you all for joining us along the ride for Wild and Uncut. Yes. I'm hoping that's the name. I like it. I we'll like say, it. Well, I got to mm. trademark that thing. You know how that goes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I love the realness of it because yeah. you just come and be as you are, you know? Yeah. Mm. I think what's cool is just that there's, you know, as we've evolved the, the three of us, mm-hmm. you know, that there's so many young girls that, you know, have looked up to to the companies that we have, you know, Mm -hmm. been part of and and what we're creating. And, you know, just as we grow, I, I, you know, just want to applaud 
the two of you because this Aww. has been Aww. fun. You know, this is this a is fun, fun journey we're on. Mm-hmm. I love you, ladies. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. It's good. My sisters, sisters from Mr. Sisters. Sisters. <laughs> so that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram. 